Hello, my name is Grace and I want to introduce you to some friends of mine who want to share their stories with you. Join me now as we listen to the stories of Jane and Florence. My name is Florence. I'm HIV positive. I'm a member of Musayope Support Group, a support group for people that are living with HIV and AIDS. I'm a widow. My husband died four years ago. We've been married for 10 years and then I have two children. When I first tested HIV positive, I couldn't accept my results thinking that maybe the counselor had made a mistake and those were not my results. I went back for my second test three months later and it also came out positive. I was so depressed. I stopped going for work. I was very down. I even stopped going to church. Until one day, our pastor and the wife visited me at home. When I disclosed my status to, to my pastor, he was very supportive and he encouraged me to go back for work. He encouraged me to go back to church. I even joined the local support group and it made my life better. Two years ago, I started my ARV drugs. Since then, I've been taking my medicine every day. When I found the courage, I told my mother and my children about my status. My children were very sad at first, but they are very wonderful and supportive. Along with my mother, they remind me to take my drugs on time. My mother has been my friend. She's been here for me always, even when other members of my family have treated me badly. I discovered that joining a support group of people that are living with HIV really helped me accept my HIV status. At first, I was shy, but soon I was able to share my life experiences. Joining this group really helped me because I found a safe place and a place where people would not judge me. I discovered that I was, I was among friends and I was not alone. My name is Jane. 
as soon as I got pregnant last year, I went to the clinic for the antenatal visit. And then there I was advised to do the test, which was the HIV test, and I did it. I agreed to take the test because I wanted to protect my child. And being a married woman, I felt I had no worry for this test. Imagine the shock I had when I was tested HIV positive. When I told my husband that I was HIV positive, my husband said that he had nothing to do with it. And from there, he left me. When he left me, I had nothing to do, because by that time, it was hard to me because I was pregnant. And I had no one to look after me. So I had to move up and down to look for food and everything and it was very difficult for me. I had to fight for myself. It was a bit difficult for me to lead a life. During the rest of my pregnancy, and after my baby was born, I followed the advice I was given by the health care provider to try and protect my child from getting infected of HIV. My baby looks healthy and she is one year old now. I hope she does not have the virus. I will know when I will take her for the test, which is when she is one year, six months. I'm getting sick often these days. I'm getting more sick. Um, the health provider says that I have to start the ARVs. And today I'm going there to start the ARVs. But mm, I'm scared of the ARVs. While I was in the waiting room, I met Florence, who has been on that drug for the past two years. After talking to Florence and the healthcare, provider, I feel much better now. The clinic told me that I need to find a treatment buddy who will help me to remember take my drugs and keep my appointments. After I told my sister, she agreed. So I will start taking my ARV drugs today. The healthcare provider told me in order for these drugs to work, I need to take them at the right time and in the correct amount every day for the rest of my life. She knows that it might not be easy for me to remember to take this drug, but I must try my best if they should work and I can get better for my family. As you have heard, Jane must take her drugs in the right amount at the right time every day this is called adherence. Adherence is very, very important because if she stops, restarts, and misses her pills, the ARVs will stop working for her. When Jane first begins to take her ARVs, she may experience some side effects which include skin rashes, feeling very tired, severe headache, and sometimes a dry mouth. But all these side effects will most likely go after a few weeks. But if these side effects do not go, she doesn't need to stop taking her ARVs. 
but she must go back to her healthcare provider for advice. ARVs are not a cure for HIV. They only make your body stronger to fight the virus and keep it under control. There is no cure yet for HIV, and that is very important for us to know. ARVs are strong medicines, and it is very, very important for Jane to eat her meals properly and to keep her strength up in other ways that are called positive living. You may have heard that ARVs will not always be available. It is government's policy that all Zambians who need ARVs must have them. The Zambian government is committed to ensure that we get good quality medicines that work. Florence has been a mentor to me. She has made me to understand my HIV, that it's just another lifetime disease to manage. And she's always on my side when I feel ill. And she advised me that I have to see the health provider anytime I feel ill for treatment. And she's the one encouraging me to take the drug on the light time, the light amount. She has been really a true friend of mine. Hello again. We have just heard from the stories of my friends, Jane and Florence. Join me now as we move away from the busy life of the city and meet another friend of mine, Wilson. He would like to share his story with you as well. My name is Wilson. In the past two years, I've had, suffered a lot of sicknesses. First, I had TB. A lot of people at work have TB. I went on TB treatment. I got better. Later on, it was malaria. This time, the malaria medicine made me better again. I was so weak, I couldn't even walk. I couldn't leave my bed. Soon after, it was diarrhea. That wasn't going, and a never-ending cough. Through all this, I never thought of going for an HIV test. Two months ago, my friend Robert got sick. He had malaria and TB. He then decided to go for an HIV test. Since I was the only friend around, I decided to go with him. It was at this stage that he, he knew he was HIV positive. When Robert found out that he was HIV positive, his CD4 count was also very, very low. CD4 cells are the body's army soldiers that help our bodies fight off any diseases that uh, affect our bodies. Before you are started on ARV drugs, there are some tests that may need to be done. Some of these tests include the liver function test, which will help to see how the liver can handle these strong drugs that you are going to start taking. The other test that may be required to be done is the CD4 count, which will also help to check the strength of your body's army. The other test is the viral load test, which may also be done to see how much HIV there is in your body. Viral load is, however, optional. It may be done or it may not be done. In some cases, the healthcare provider will also use other ways to see if you are ready to start on the ARV medicines. Two weeks ago, my friend Robert died. I had known Robert since we were children. I miss him. People said it is the ARVs that killed Robert, but the cancer that 
said, starting treatment too late can mean the other diseases may finish you before the ARVs have a chance to work. Since I have similar symptoms to the ones that Robert had, I've also decided to go for an HIV test. I've just been told that I'm HIV positive and that my CD4 count is too low. I'm not scared of my HIV results, but what has scared me is that my viral load is too high and my immune system is very weak. I worry that I might also die quickly like Robert. I wish I had gone for VCT earlier. Doctor has explained to me, now that I'm HIV positive, I must seek early treatment for infections that I might get and protect myself from any infections. Because if these infections are left untreated, they could be severe and even take my life. Some of the problems that Wilson should look out for include things like vomiting, pain when having sex, diarrhea that won't go away, coughing, difficulty in breathing, uh, skin rashes, swelling around the neck, just to mention but a few. If Wilson experiences any of these problems, he should immediately go to the clinic so that he's able to receive treatment for them. First I had to tell my wife. It was a very difficult thing to do, but I was surprised she was not angry at me. I'm so thankful for her support. When he first told me that he was found HIV positive, I was shocked. But as he kept on talking to me, I knew that what he needed most was my support. And I now know that I also need to get tested for HIV. It was even more difficult disclosing to my father, him being the village headman. I knew the shame it might bring to him and the family. When I told him, he didn't take the news so well, but for me it was important that he knew. Maybe one day he'll be supportive. I have openly discussed with people, with my friends, and have sometimes, most of the time, escorted them for VCT, and they have had their tests done. Some have tested positive, some have tested negative, but together we are living happily now. Disclosing my HIV status has brought very positive results in my life and that of my community. Now I'm feeling far much better. But from the counseling that I got from the clinic, I should not stop taking my drugs. I have to take them every day, the right dosage, and at the right time. Now Wilson must keep taking his ARV drugs every day, at the right time, in the right amount, for the rest of his life. Otherwise, if he stops taking his drugs, the HIV virus is going to take a rest and the medicines are not going to work for him. This is called drug resistance. Drug resistance is when Wilson stops taking his drugs and then he restarts again, meaning the HIV virus begins to get stronger and stronger in his body. This is very dangerous for Wilson. What this means is that Wilson will have to change his drugs. He, will, he may need to take a different type of drugs which may not be available in the clinic that is nearest to where he stays. Mabel went for an HIV test. The test came out positive. But for her, 
Her CD4 count is still high. She doesn't have to go on ARVs yet. We remain active by sharing the housework. I help her cook. We make sure she cooks a balanced diet every day to help boost her immune system. It is very, very important for Wilson not to share his medicines with his wife. This is very important because each person is given drugs that are enough for one person. So when they share, this becomes very, very harmful for both of them. What that means is that um, the ARV drugs are not going to work for any one of them because they would have shared the dose that is supposed to be for one person. It is also important for Wilson to stop or to reduce on his smoking or drinking alcohol while he's taking the ARV drugs. They are not going to be very effective for Wilson. I understand that every time we have sex, we must use a condom as it's important to avoid us infecting ourselves. It is very, very important to remember that even though both Wilson and Mabel are HIV positive, it is very possible for them to reinfect each other with more of the virus or they can get infected with a different type of the virus. So it's very, very important that they know how to protect themselves from reinfecting each other. Wilson and Mabel also need to make sure that they don't reinfect or they don't get infected with other sexually transmitted infections because this can be very dangerous for people living with HIV and AIDS. In this story, we have heard the stories of four of my friends. These are Jane, Florence, Wilson, and Mabel. Each one of them has told us their story about their HIV positive status and their experience with taking ARVs. But the most important things to remember are for us to make sure that we go for VCT. And for all this to happen, we need to know our HIV status. We need to visit a VCT center so that we get ourselves tested for HIV so that we know our status. The second thing that is important to remember is adherence. What adherence means is that you take your drugs in the right amount at the same time every day and you take them for the rest of your life. Adherence also includes making sure that you attend to all your follow-up visits at the clinic meaning you must go back for all your appointments at the clinic whenever you are required to do so. So we have seen from our stories how these friends of mine have been adherent to their drugs. The third thing that is very important to remember is the issue of support groups. Support groups are an important way of getting the support we need if we are HIV positive. It's very, very important that we identify or find a support group from within the community where we live so that we are assisted to know how to look after ourselves and how to take our ARV drugs. The fourth thing that is very important is the issue of positive living. Positive living includes remembering to practice safer sex and this means that you agree as a couple to use condoms correctly each time you have sex. It also means keeping your body active, eating good food. As we heard from Wilson's story, it's very important that we need to reduce or if we can, stop smoking and drinking alcohol. Millions of people around the world are taking their ARVs every day for the rest of their lives. So you're not the only one. You too can do the same. <laughs>